All I ever wanted to do was live in a big city. Being from a small country town, the big city and bright lights were always extremely appealing to me. I finally got my wish when I made the move to the city. I loved everything about it at first. The nightlife, the hustle, the bustle, and the people. I felt like I was tailor-made for the city, you know. I found an apartment on the 20th floor of a building and the view was incredible. I could see a sea of lights every night and the sounds were amazing. It felt like the city was a living and breathing organism. What I loved about this apartment was that I was on the top floor. I had nobody above me to distract me, however, my neighbors below me were another story. One night after work, it was late and I had picked up a job as a bartender. I made my way home for some much needed rest. While I was getting into more comfortable clothes, I thought I could hear screaming. I turned the TV to mute and I listened intently. It was undeniably screaming. I was able to pinpoint where the screams were coming from and it was right below me. At first it was muffled screams. I could hear the tone and inflection of the voices but couldn't make out any of the words. I continued getting ready and noticed that the voices were getting louder. The apartment had a small screened in balcony and I went out there and I could hear much more clearly. It's like when there was a bad accident and you can't really look away. It was uncomfortable to listen to but I wanted to keep listening and as horrible as that may sound, it was clearly a male and female arguing. The male was going insane. I could clearly hear things like, you don't think I'll do it and I'd love to see if you can fly. My first thought was, is he going to throw his chick out the window or something? Then I heard the woman get extra loud when she said, you have no idea what I can do and whom I know. Now, versions of that argument continued for another five minutes or so until I heard a loud crash. So loud that it vibrated my entire screened in balcony. It was quiet for a couple of seconds, and just as I started to fear the worst, I heard another voice now. It was a different male voice, and he screamed, Look what you did, you idiot. The woman started to scream back at him. I didn't hear the other man, so I started to let my mind wander again as to what happened. The briefest of relief came over me when I heard the first guy start shouting again. At this point, all three people were just shouting almost incoherently to each other. I contemplated for a while what I should do. Clearly, I should have just called the cops, but I didn't, and instead, I made a choice that I would soon come to regret. As you would see in movies or shows, I grabbed a broomstick, and I just banged on the floor in my living room. That was my attempt to alert the neighbors that they were loud and to just keep it down. Now, after my assault on the floorboards, I listened and I didn't hear anything. I went back out to the balcony to see if I could hear anything and it was still quiet. I figured for a moment that I'd accomplished my goal, but I could not have been more wrong. They must have gone out to their balcony because now they started to scream at me. I had heard one of the men first as he addressed his anger at me saying, Are you serious? Do you have a problem? I just stayed quiet. Then I heard the woman, her responding, Mind your business, this doesn't concern you. Now embarrassed, I quietly went inside and just wanted this ordeal to be over. I could hear the muffled screaming, but now I couldn't tell if they were yelling at me or yelling amongst themselves. I can't even begin to explain how uncomfortable it is to sit and just hear this level of screaming. The type of screaming that I would consider borderline violence, really. And then finally, it stopped. It was finally quiet enough for nearly 20 minutes, and I turned off the TV and just got into bed. And just as I was dozing off, I heard a knock at the door. I thought maybe I was going in and out of consciousness and maybe I dreamed the knock at the door, but I slowly got out of bed and made my way to the door. I heard the knock again and it was clearly a knock and not my imagination. I asked who it was and the only response I got was another slow series of knocks. The apartments I lived in all had small cameras on the side of the door, so I was able to pull up the camera. It was two guys and a girl, and right away I realized that it had to be my neighbors from below me. I didn't answer the door, and then the knocks kept coming. The woman was doing the knocking, and the two men just stood behind her with their hands in their pockets, it seemed. I'm not sure what they planned on doing at 3.30 in the morning. I just continued to ignore them at the door, and and that's when the one guy started beating on the door with his fist. I was able to get a good look at the guy. He was huge. He was bald and had a tight beard. He had some sort of line work tattoo coming from the back of his shirt to the bottom of his skull. 
He had a fist that looked like a boulder as he banged on the door. And they knew about the cameras since they lived in the building, and that's when the man leaned over to the camera box and started to whisper, Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. And he just kept saying that on repeat. I didn't respond. And in fact, I finally, thank God, did call the police. I went to the bedroom and shut the door and whispered to the dispatch operator. I remained on the phone with them until they sent someone. The entire time I waited, they just kept knocking and whispering, open the door. They were still standing there when the police finally showed up. One of the officers escorted them away, and I'm not sure what happened to them after that. I spoke with one of the police officers after the other one got them off my floor. I don't think they were below me because I couldn't hear anything, and I gave the officer my entire account of the evening, and that was basically it. I never heard back from the police, but I also never had a run-in with these three again. I also took extra precautions after this and locked my door with an extra lock. I never heard another peep from that apartment below me after this, which I found most strange of all about all of this. Even though I had just moved to the city not that long before, I had my fill of the city after this night and once my lease was up, I moved back to the country, where it was quiet all the time. My girlfriend and I had just moved into our new apartment not that long ago. We love the place and it's our first place together so for that reason it's very special to us. I have lived in apartments before and they can be less than ideal. This place on the other hand was great. The apartment unit was recently remodeled and everything was brand new. It was a great little place to start this chapter of our lives. Now I know this may sound ridiculous but for me one of the best parts was behind the apartments. There was a small path that led to a local breakfast diner. Anybody who knows me knows I can crush some bacon and eggs every day of the week. I told my girlfriend about the short path and told her that on Sunday when she was off and free from work that we would have to have a little walk over to the diner. Sunday came and we made our way to the path. Now it's important to note that the path itself is maybe 30 yards or so. It's not very long. It is literally a short dirt path surrounded by a massive path of trees. When we were walking over to the diner, we noticed a bag of clothes just sitting in the middle of the dirt path. We both just looked at it and kept walking. I mean, sure, it was weird, but it was breakfast time, and I wasn't worried about a bag of clothes. I figured someone just dropped it while walking to the diner or something. And after our amazing breakfast, we walked back and noticed that the bag was gone. I said to my girlfriend, See, I told you someone just dropped it. And she begrudgingly agreed, but we went about our day. I worked from home during the week, so I would walk over to the diner every morning. The next day, when I walked to the diner, I noticed the bag again, but this time, it was to the side of the path instead of just in the middle of the walkway. I just figured that I missed it yesterday and somebody must have just moved it and that's why we didn't see it when we walked back to the apartment. After breakfast, when I walked back, I saw someone going through the bag. I cautiously walked by just because it looked like some strange man. When I got closer, the man turned around and looked at me with a sort of crazed look in his eyes, but I kept walking and just gave him a friendly good morning. The man said nothing, but out of the thick trees, a very small and frail looking woman appeared. Her legs looked more like twigs and she was missing most of her teeth. I instinctively jumped back just because it was very alarming. In a low, raspy voice, almost like she smoked eight cigarettes a day for breakfast alone, she says, Keep walking. I didn't engage with those two at all. I did keep walking and just shook my head. I didn't want to tell my girlfriend about that because I figured that she would never want to walk over to that diner again and I was pretty sure that this was just some random one-time event with just some shady characters. I didn't go to breakfast until Friday. I made my way to the path and I was instantly relieved that the bag was gone. While I was walking down the short path, I investigated the tree line where the bag was located the last time I walked and I saw the silhouettes of two people standing in the foliage. I didn't stop and look and ultimately just kept going. My gut told me who was standing there but I didn't want to take any chances. I felt uneasy during my meal and I didn't want to walk by that path again. I had visions in my head of those two people jumping out and trying to rob me or something. 
So, after breakfast, instead of walking through the pathway, I walked the long way, all the way around which ended up being about 40 minutes compared to the quick 5 minutes, believe it or not. I forgot to tell my girlfriend about the experience that I had that day. When Sunday came, she suggested that we go to the diner. Now I was pumped for breakfast, and sadly, I had already completely forgotten about the brief experience that I had on that path. As I write this, and I'm listing the events that happened, I'm ashamed that I didn't remember, but at that moment, since nothing really had happened, I just didn't think about it. It wasn't until we got to the path that Sunday morning that I remembered what had happened. I stopped for a quick second, but then kept going. I didn't want to scare my girlfriend and there was a chance the two were gone. While we were walking, she was telling me some story and I was watching the tree line for any movement. About halfway through the path, the man ran out of the woods and stood blocking our path. The woman came out and stood behind us. My girlfriend, trying to be rational, tried to communicate with the two, but neither of them said anything and just started inching closer to us. The gap was closing and I could feel the panic start setting in. I grabbed my girlfriend's hand, and as I attempted to make my move, instead of running through the guy, who was significantly larger than the woman, I turned and ran through the skinny woman like I was a truck. As I was running through the woman, she somehow got a hold of my back and scratched me with her nails, which surprisingly broke my skin. She screamed one of the most horrific noises I had ever heard when we ran by. As we ran back to our apartment, I could hear them fighting on the path, but I couldn't make out the words. We just called the police when we got back and reported the incident, but of course, they were already gone when they went to check. The apartment has cameras all over the lot, but none of them reached the path, so they had no footage of the two. About 20 feet into the thickness, they found sleeping bags, trash, and bottles. These two had been living on the path for a while before they finally decided to attack us. Thankfully, we didn't sustain any real injuries and as far as we know, nobody else got hurt or attacked. We feel a little uneasy that these two were never caught and unfortunately, no new information was ever reported. I make the short drive now whenever I go to the diner and I plan on never taking that short path ever again. A couple of years ago when I was in between jobs, I moved into an apartment to save money. The apartment complex was beautiful. It was a smaller complex located right in the heart of a quiet and nestled community. Most of the residents in the complex were older folks that were retired and just didn't need the space of an entire house. When I was moving into the building I noticed another young person like me watching from one of the windows. It was a beautiful girl, someone that personally I would consider to be out of my league. Unfortunately, my career didn't allow for much dating. After moving in, I noticed that often, I would come or go from the parking lot and I would see the woman looking at me. I just assumed that she was nosy or something like that and I didn't think for one second that she had any interest in me. Down the road from the complex was a grocery store that was very convenient to stop in on my way home from work. One afternoon after work, when I stopped in the store to grab some dinner, I ended up physically running into the girl who had been staring at me for a few days now, and I literally mean that we physically collided with each other. I was turning into an aisle with my head on my phone and she was walking out of the aisle. In a nervous voice she said, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm just an idiot sometimes. I started to say it was okay but stopped when I realized who it was. Once everything clicked I said, Hey, are you the girl that lives in my building? She started to smile and blush and then said, Yeah, that's me. I'm usually the one who gets nervous and blushes uncontrollably in these kinds of situations, so it was nice that the heat was on someone else for a change. She made some comments about her stupid cheeks turning red, and I responded by telling her that in high school, my friends used to call me a cherry pie because my face was always red. We both laughed as I diffused the tension. We made small talk for a little while, right there in the store, and then... That evolved into a real conversation. Finally, I worked up the courage to ask if she wanted to come over for dinner tonight since we were practically neighbors. She smiled and looked thrilled by the offer. She accepted and said that she would be over at around 7, and we exchanged numbers and went about our shopping. I was so excited and nervous about my date with this 
very attractive neighbor that I had. I realized that I only had about an hour to clean my apartment and get ready. I hadn't had a real date since my freshman year of college, over four years ago, so I was admittedly a train wreck in my mind. I even remember while I was cleaning the apartment, I got a text from her that said, I can't wait for tonight, with a heart. Before I knew it, it was seven, and she was knocking on my door. The first several hours were amazing. We talked, ate dinner, had some wine, and just had a great evening. I felt like this was my first real adult date, and I was proud of how it was unfolding. Late in the evening, I was ready for bed, and this was a weeknight, and I had to work the next day, and I could tell that she wanted to stay, but I made it clear that I wasn't ready for anything further than this. She was understanding, and we said goodnight at around 11 p.m. When I walked her to her door, which sat about 30 feet from my door, I kissed her goodnight, and she smiled. I walked inside my apartment with an overwhelming feeling of joy and happiness. I woke up at around 3 a.m. that morning just to use the bathroom, and I noticed something weird as I walked into the hall. In the light that was shining under the door to my apartment was a shadow, like someone was standing in front of my door. I figured it was my tired eyes just playing tricks on me, so I didn't worry too much. After the bathroom, when I walked by the door again, I noticed that the obstruction to the light was still there. I quietly went over to the door and looked through the peephole in the door, and standing right outside my door was the girl that I had just shared an entire evening with. She looked like she was mumbling something under her breath, but I wasn't sure. If I ever look through one of those holes, they're not very clear sometimes, so I watched for a few seconds and she didn't move at all. I snuck back into my room and grabbed my phone. I made sure that it was silent and went back to the door, and I texted her phone and said, Hey, I can't sleep, but I just wanted to let you know that I had a great time tonight. Seconds later, she grabbed her phone from her pocket, and with no expression on her face, she responded with, Me too, with an exclamation point. I can't wait to see you again. I waited for a moment, and then sent another text that said, I'm surprised you're awake, what are you up to? Her response turned the butterflies in my stomach to stone, when she responded with, Oh, just laying in bed, watching Netflix. I couldn't understand why she was standing there and lying about it. I didn't respond to her text right away. I had no idea what to say to this woman or how to approach a situation like this. While I was thinking of something to say, she texted me again, this time saying, If you want, I can come back, or you can come here. The text was followed by a bunch of emojis. I started to type a response but kept deleting whatever I typed. While I was typing, she texted me again and said, You have nothing to be afraid of. And that text hit me differently for some reason. I finally sent a simple text that just read, Thanks for the offer, but I'm really tired. I looked through the hole as she read the message and still, with no expression on her face, she put the phone back in her pocket and looked right at the peephole. I knew she couldn't see me, but the horror that I felt when I sort of made eye contact with the woman through the door was almost indescribable. The look on her face was not the same look I had just admired that evening prior. Her eyes looked cold, and I have no idea what her intentions were, but I just felt like they weren't good. I know I'm not good at dating, but I do know standing outside someone's door in the middle of the night motionless is not normal behavior. I decided to text her one last time and said, Hey, did you hear anything funny in the hall? I thought I heard a knock on my door. This was my poor attempt to try and fish something out of her or at least elicit some reaction. She looked at the text for a minute then back at the peephole with her cold eyes as if though she knew I was there. And without moving from her position, she texted me one last time that said, You're a smart boy. Very smart. Sleep tight. She put her head back down, and after about five minutes of just standing there, she turned around and went back to her apartment. She looked like she had something tucked in the back of her pants, but looking through the peephole, this could have just been my imagination, so I wasn't sure. I texted her the next day and she never responded. Even though she lived a few doors down, I never did run into her again. I left a note for her one time and slipped it under her door and still never heard from her. I never told the apartment management because I didn't really think anything could be done. It was an unnerving and terrifying experience for me, but I had no proof other than a few text messages that didn't show anything legal or really make any sense. I never saw her again, which 
is insane considering that I lived at this apartment for six months after this experience. The curtains were always shut when I would get home from work and I never crossed paths with her in the hallway. Now I know the story isn't your typical oh god I'm gonna die story but to put yourself in my shoes I guarantee you wouldn't want to be me. The memory of that look in her eyes still haunts me to this day. Friends have always joked with me that she probably was just looking for some adult companionship but I promise you this was different. Be careful out there because you never know what kind of intentions people have deep down. I was lucky enough to get accepted into an apartment building that I had hoped to get into for years. Once I was making enough money in my current job to pay off my student loans and become debt free, I applied to live in my dream apartment. The interior itself was really spacious and gave a really sleek and modern vibe. My favorite part was the little balcony where I could enjoy sunrises and sunsets or just quiet with my thoughts and meditate to the sounds outside the apartment. When there was an opening in the building and I was accepted, I was beyond excited. I started figuring out what I could bring from my current place and what I would have to buy for the new spot. I didn't have to worry about a commute because I am lucky enough to work from home. Another reason why I wanted a bigger space was to accommodate a larger office, somewhere where I could stretch my legs and get a bigger chair and desk. The move-in went smoothly and I have been really loving my time here so far. Well, that was until a few months ago. As I said, the balcony was my favorite part of my apartment. I spent many mornings and nights out there either reading, meditating, and just messing around on my phone. The balcony faces another apartment building, so there really isn't much of a view. They don't have balconies across the way, but they all have tall windows that basically match the size of my sliding glass door that takes you to the balcony. One random night about six weeks after I moved in, I got a weird feeling that I was being watched or that someone was in my apartment. I went back inside and looked around and the eerie feeling subsided, but once I went back outside to read, I got the same feeling again. I wasn't sure if it was from the book that I was reading or if I was just randomly getting anxious. I looked up from my book and looked across the way towards the other apartment building and after about a minute of staring blankly, I finally caught someone standing in front of the window, staring in what appeared to be my direction. As soon as I stood up and looked that way, the curtains shuffled and the figure was gone. I really didn't think much of it at the time and could have been anything and it was silly to think that it was someone just staring at me. However, as the days went on, I couldn't help but shake that same feeling that I was being watched. It even made me stop wanting to go out onto the balcony, especially at night. But one night after an extremely long day of work and a few mixed drinks under my belt, I decided to head outside and scroll through social media and just enjoy a nice evening breeze. All was normal until I noticed a flashing light at one of the windows across the street. The light was flickering on and off like someone was hitting the switch up and down. As I stood up to get a better look, it stopped and the light stayed on. Pressed against the glass was a man waving and pointing. At first, I couldn't make out what the motion was, but it was definitely pointing in my direction, and then a very energetic wave. I tried to look around to see if I could see if anyone surrounding my apartment was maybe out on their balcony or waving to the person across the street. However, when I looked back, the man again was pointing, as if to infer that he was confirming he indeed was trying to get my attention or wave to me. I didn't know what to do, so I reluctantly gave a half wave back. Once I did that, the man's gesturing stopped. He was too far away, so I couldn't make out his face or expression, but I could see that he was completely still now and just staring at me. I stared back for a minute or so and then decided that it would probably be best to stay inside for the night. I had trouble falling asleep. I had a lot running through my mind from work and also that incident, even though harmless, was still just really weird. The next day I had to go out and run a bunch of errands so I woke up really early so I could still have a majority of the day to relax and binge some TV. As I got home, I was feeling very accomplished and had basically forgotten about everything that had transpired the previous day. After I put the groceries away and cleaned up a little bit, I made a cup of hot tea and honey. 
It was a little cooler out than the previous day, so I put on some sweats and a hoodie and went outside to drink my tea on the balcony. When I went to sit down, I noticed that there was a piece of paper on my table. It was a piece of pink paper about the size of a sticky note and it was taped down. All that was on it was an image of a smiley face, but the eyes were stars instead of dots. The horrifying thing about this scenario is not only that my apartment door was locked before I left and when I got home, but also there was a lock on the sliding door to get onto the balcony, and that was also locked before I left and when I arrived home. It's been a little over two months since this occurred. I haven't gone out to the balcony really at all since this happened, and to be honest, I really haven't left my apartment that much outside of when I need to. I haven't reported anything to the building, and I've been trying to brush the incident off. Why a smiley face with stars in the eyes? Is there any significance to that? I tried to Google it, but couldn't find anything really. Anyway, hopefully this is my last update, and my dream apartment can remain that, instead of turning into a nightmare. When I was young, my brother and I moved into a small apartment with our recently single mother. It's not important to the story, but just for full transparency, dad was a horrible person and not in the picture. My dear mother did everything she possibly could for us kids. We hated moving to that small apartment, but it was a roof over our heads, I guess. I look back at those days now and I'm shocked that we even lived there. It's a very bad section of the city, but that's all my mom could afford back then. Fortunately for us, my brother and I didn't realize just how bad it was. Sometimes the stupid innocence of a child can be bliss. My mom was working two jobs back then to save up enough money so we could move out at the earliest possible chance. She trusted us kids, but just had one rule. When she wasn't home, never leave the apartment or open the door for anybody. Again, thinking back to those days as I write this, I'm still utterly shocked that she just left us alone there. But I don't fault her. Mom had to do what she had to do, and she was an absolute trooper for it. Back then, I was a little too young to be left alone, especially in that area of the city, but my brother was old enough to watch me for several hours while my mom waited tables at a local diner. My brother was not like me. I was quiet and never in trouble. My brother Jack, whom we called Jackie, was the complete opposite. He was constantly in trouble in school and with his friend's parents. He was the kid who would find trouble, even when he wasn't looking for it, and with all that being said, he is still my older brother, and of course, I looked up to him and just wanted to be just like him. But one specific night that has been burned into my memories forever, Mom left for her late shift at the diner and left Jackie in charge. These nights we would usually watch something on TV, eat some food and go to sleep before Mom would even get home. But on this specific night, Jackie had other plans. Before I break down the story, I need to paint a picture of the apartment building. The building was an older brick building. You wouldn't even know if it was an apartment building unless you lived there. In fact, the building is abandoned now as I write this, looking back. We lived on the fifth floor, which was the top floor of the building. When we would get home from school, we would take the stairs to our floor because the only elevator was either broken or had something going on in there that we kids shouldn't see. And this is where things get a little weird. When taking the stairs, you would have to get off on the fourth floor because for some reason the staircase on this side didn't go up to the fifth floor. Once on the fourth floor, you would have to walk all the way to the end of the hall to the left and take a separate staircase up to the fifth floor. I'm not sure why the building was built this way, but it was my life for several months. When making your way down the long hallway on the fourth floor, you couldn't help but notice the door at the end of the hall on the right. It was boarded up the entire time we lived in the building. Jackie would always tell me that it was haunted or that a crazed madman lived there. It always scared the heck out of me, though. Whenever we got home, I would run as fast as I could to the stairs. Unfortunately, I had to see it every day because it sat across from the staircase to the fifth floor. Every day, the door made me uneasy and scared and I couldn't even begin to form thoughts back then as to why. Okay, so now that I've laid out the structure a little bit, I'll tell you my actual story. For me personally, just the memory of that stupid door is enough to give me goosebumps. But unfortunately for me, that's not the story I'm telling you today. That night, while mom was working, my brother started to talk about breaking into that apartment. 
I knew it was wrong, and I felt in my gut that it was a bad idea. After a little convincing, I gave in to his plan because I wanted to be cool and brave like my brother. I also figured if kids at school knew what I did, maybe I wouldn't be bullied as much. Around 10 p.m., we snuck down to the fourth floor. We made sure nobody was around, and just like most nights, it was completely desolate in those halls. I remember staring up at the door and feeling like I was going to faint. I remember having the thought that because my heart was beating so fast, I was wondering if a child could have a heart attack. I'm not sure where he learned it, but my brother broke the lock and we entered the apartment. It was disgusting inside. It smelled so bad. I distinctly have a memory of the smell inside being so overwhelming that I had tears in my eyes. None of the windows had any shades or curtains, so even though it was dark outside, the entire apartment was illuminated by the orange light from the street posts that literally sat right outside the windows. The apartment was filled to the brim with junk, boxes and furniture everywhere. You couldn't even walk on the floor because there was so much debris and trash lying around. It didn't click right away as to why the apartment had all this clutter inside. I was too preoccupied with the smell to have any other thoughts. As we shimmied our way through the apartment, my brother stopped instantly and grabbed my chest. I stopped and looked at him and he gestured for me to be quiet. Before I could process what was happening, he gestured again for me to duck down and essentially push me down to the ground himself. As I sat hiding behind a mountain of trash, I heard a voice coming from the far side of the room. It was low and gruff and the voice sounded like it was straining to talk and I couldn't make out the first thing he said. But then I heard the second part and he said, I know you're back here. I've been waiting for you. I was about ready to burst into tears, but my brother kept eye contact and kept me quiet. He just kept shaking his head and gesturing for me to remain quiet. The man spoke up again. I know you're hiding in here. Come out. I got something for you. He must have moved because I could hear the shuffling of trash. Is that you? The man shouted, and it sounded like he struck a pile of trash with something heavy. That's not you. But I know you're still here. I could hear the man closing in on her hiding spot. Thank God for my brother because I would have sat there until this man found me. When the man was standing right behind the pile we were hiding behind, my brother jumped out, tackled the man to the ground. Jackie grabbed my hand and we ran out of the apartment as fast as we could. As we were running out of the apartment, I caught a quick glimpse of the man as he was getting to his feet. It was an older man, very skinny and he looked like he hadn't eaten or showered in weeks. I just remember thinking, it looked like his cheeks were melting off his face. We ran to our apartment and locked the door. Jackie stood in the kitchen with a knife the entire night until my mom got home. He convinced me not to tell my mom because he knew he would be in trouble forever and my mom would probably quit that job and we needed the money badly. Nothing ever happened after that. I never saw the guy again and the next day the door was boarded up again. We never mentioned it to the neighbors or anybody because we were terrified of getting into trouble. As an adult... I understand a bit more about what happened that evening. Clearly it was an older guy who had some sort of severe hoarding issue. The reason why he had the door boarded up was probably because he dealt with a lot of robberies in that neighborhood. My brother and I just happened to stumble into that place at the wrong time, when the man was finally ready to act. I realized to some that this story may not be edge of your seat terrifying or scary, but as a kid this was beyond traumatizing. I will say... The events of the story, though haunting to my memory, made me never want to break into any place ever again. Click the join button to become a member today for exclusive content. This is a story that I find creepy and very unnerving, more than just scary. Last year I moved into a new apartment building as a recent college graduate I didn't have the funds to afford my house. I was unable to secure a job in my field but needed to wait until I saved up enough money to be able to move into a house. At first, the apartment life wasn't too bad for me. I lived in an apartment when I was in college so I knew for the most part what I was getting into. 
The only thing I was worried about was the fact that I worked from home and I wasn't sure if living in such proximity to others would distract or disrupt me. Fortunately for me, the apartment complex was quiet almost all the time. Especially during the day when I worked, there were very few cars in the parking lot. Something to note about me is that I have a horrible tendency to be overly observant. Friends have so kindly referred to me as a creep, in other words. Shortly after moving into the apartment, I made a mental note of all the tenants in my building. I have always done this, even since I was a kid. I'm not sure if it's deep-rooted trust issues or what, but within a week, I knew who lived in my building and what cars they drove. My computer sat right next to the window, and often when I was in a meeting or in a call, I would stare out the window and play my own game, wondering where people were going or what they were doing for the day. I understand how boring my life is, I admit it, but... I digress. One day, though, I saw a woman come into my building. I only note this because I didn't recognize this woman and she didn't drive either. Probably 15 minutes later, I noticed her leave and walk into the building across the parking lot. Several minutes later, she left again and walked into the tree line behind the other building. It was weird, but not a red flag. It could have been any number of reasons why. The only thing I kept wondering was how she got into the buildings. The doors are locked unless you have a key to the building and every building has a different key. A few days later I was sitting at my computer and I happened to see this lady again. This time I was a bit more curious. I watched her emerge practically out of nowhere and make her way to the entrance of my building. Being on the third floor I have the nice advantage of seeing the complex from my window. I checked the camera from my ring doorbell but she wasn't on my floor. I left my apartment to be nosy and see if I could find where this girl was in the building. I figured that I would make my way to the laundry room and walk back, and if I didn't see her during that time, then I would just let things go. I made it to the laundry room, and when I was walking back, I saw the woman come from the apartment that sat below mine. She left the apartment quickly and bumped into me. We exchanged an awkward glance, and I said I was sorry, and she nodded in a strange way and kept going. I ran back to my apartment and watched her leave my building, she glanced back at the door a few times and then made her way to the building across the parking lot again. I thought maybe my imagination was running wild, but it felt like something wasn't right. I knew that the lady that lived below me was a widowed woman in her 70s. The strange woman could have been her daughter, but as I said before, something just didn't feel right about that. The look on her face was a look of anxiety. I kept monitoring the next few days, but I didn't see her again until almost a week later. Just as always, I saw her appear out of nowhere. She kept looking over her shoulder as she approached my building. She entered the building and as I listened it sounded like she was outside of my apartment. I pulled up the video feed from my camera and to my surprise she was right outside but not at my door. She was at the door of the guy who lived across the hall. She looked nervous as she kept knocking on the door lightly and looking back and forth. After a minute or so she pulled out a key and opened the door. I waited and watched the camera for 16 minutes until the door opened again and she left briskly. Right after leaving his apartment, she made her way across the parking lot again and the same pattern continued. Now I felt uneasy about the situation so I planned on asking my neighbor across the hall if she was expecting a visitor. That night when he got home I waited a little while and then went and knocked on his door. The guy looked annoyed and asked what I wanted. I told him what happened and asked if he was expecting anyone in his apartment today. He was as white as a ghost after I told him. He told me that he was annoyed because he had money that he was sure that he left on the dresser and it was gone. He figured that he misplaced it but now he was scared that somebody had broken into his apartment. We looked back at the footage and he looked sick. He thought the woman looked familiar but it was nobody he directly knew. We went to the main office and gave them all the information. Basically, they told us to call the main office and the cops as soon as we see this woman again. Thankfully, only two days later the woman came back and I called the police right away. She must have seen the cop car because as soon as the cops pulled in, minutes later the woman ran out in a full sprint. The cops chased her and caught her before she could break into the tree line. As it turns out, the woman basically had some type of skeleton key to the apartments that only the maintenance crew had access to. This woman was the girlfriend of the maintenance man that was fired right before I moved in. Apparently this guy was fired and arrested for stalking a woman who lived somewhere in the complex. 
and to get revenge, apparently, he was having his girlfriend break into the apartment and rob them of their valuables. The most disturbing detail was that this guy knew all the schedules of the people he had his girlfriend rob, so he knew who wouldn't be in their apartment at certain times. Now, even though this isn't super scary from my perspective, the thought of someone just being in your home and taking your valuables is so disturbing to me. The idea that someone can have access to your home without you knowing is enough to give me nightmares. And thankfully, for once, my nosy nature finally served some good. In 2018, I broke up with my boyfriend and was nearly homeless. I moved across the country with him and, as life sometimes happens, it didn't work out. Unfortunately, I didn't know anyone where I was and I had nowhere to go. I was living out of my car for a couple of days until I found a beautiful little apartment complex that was accepting new tenants. I went in and pleaded my case to the management team there and thankfully they pulled some strings and got me in right away. I didn't have much to move in at first, since most of the stuff I left at my last place. As I slowly started to gather furniture, the place started to feel like a home. My cute little one-bedroom studio apartment became my pride and joy. It didn't take long for my ex-boyfriend to find where I was, and I kid you not, he would drop off boxes full of my stuff and leave it on the front steps of the apartment building. A real classy boy, that one. The apartments I was living in offered garages for your car or storage. Most of the tenants used it for storage. The only thing that wasn't ideal was that you were sharing the garage with another random tenant, and they weren't sorted out by the building or apartment number, but basically by whatever one was available. I got a garage unit that thankfully wasn't that far of a walk from my apartment. They had one left, and I felt incredibly lucky. When I made my way to the garage and opened it up, I was surprised to see an older man sitting in there just rocking in a chair. He was angry as soon as I opened the door, and he shouted, Hey! Get out of here, this is my garage. I was a bit uncomfortable, but I always stand my ground. In a very polite voice, I responded to the man. I I'm sorry, sir, but I, I just purchased the other half of this garage for my storage. I'm sorry, but you'll have to share now. The man didn't like this. He got up out of his chair and made his way to the door, and he started shouting. Well, I don't think so. The man literally started to grab my boxes and throw them back into the parking lot. As I stood there, blown away by the antics of this man, he continued to complain. I pay for this space, it's mine! Get your crap out of there! Not wanting to escalate this anymore, I went back to the office and told the woman in charge that the old guy wouldn't let me in the garage. She looked annoyed as if this had been a problem before, and she went down there and laid down the law with this older guy. They went back and forth, but ultimately it ended with the guy moving his stuff to his side of the line. Yes, there was a literal line in the middle of the garage separating the two sides for each tenant. I brought my stuff in there as quickly as I could because I wanted nothing to do with this guy. He grumbled to himself the entire time I brought my stuff over and I just ignored him. The next couple of days I had a bad feeling about my stuff. I didn't have anything insanely valuable in there, but most of the stuff in those boxes were personal belongings or sentimental to me in some way. One night, early in the evening, I decided to go check on my stuff and I couldn't believe what I saw. The man sitting in his chair rocking back and forth and wearing one of my scarves. I started to yell at the guy and he responded, This is my scarf, little lady. And that's when I noticed that he had gone through all of my boxes and thrown my belongings all over the garage. Clothes, paperwork, furniture, everything on my side were thrown all over the place. I called him out on it and he became incredibly hostile and said, I didn't touch your stuff. Now you relax. I went back to the management of the apartments and told them everything. She approached the man and they went at it again. The old man denied touching my stuff and claimed that it was like that when he came into the garage. I didn't buy it and neither did the manager. I believe she threatened to evict the guy and told him that he could no longer have access to the garage. He had two days to get all of his belongings out of there. The man was upset and screaming. I almost felt bad for him until I remembered all of my stuff on the ground. The man left the garage enraged. I could hear him screaming all the way through the parking lot. When he was gone, I closed the door and started to pick up my belongings. Curiosity got the better of me and I started to glance at his side. 
This guy had a ton of interesting stuff when I stopped to look at his side. It wasn't just junk and clutter, but really unbelievable antiques. He had stuff from old wars, old movie posters, books, and anything cool you can think of. It was like a vault of treasure. I continued to put my stuff away, and that's when I noticed my scarf. He was right. The scarf he was wearing was, in fact, his scarf. I felt horrible and thought I owed the guy an apology. I even decided to myself that if I don't see him within the next two days, I'll tell the manager that he can store his stuff in my garage. I just don't want him in there unless I'm there. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of sirens outside. I looked out from my balcony and I could see that the sirens were outside of my garage. I ran down there and I couldn't believe my eyes. The older man looked like he had been hit by a bus, but was standing up talking to the police and the manager of the apartments. I looked back at the car, and it was insane. It was my ex-boyfriend. I ran over to the police and asked what was going on, and basically my ex had been breaking into my garage unit and going through all my stuff, basically just trying to make my life a nightmare. He wasn't trying to rob or steal anything. The old man knew that he was innocent and went down to the garage and waited all night for something to happen. Around 5 a.m., my ex started breaking in, and once he went over to my boxes and threw stuff around, the old man confronted him. A brief fight ensued, and the old guy was like some decorated war hero, and even at his advanced age, he was able to take down my ex. I thanked the man and tried to give him something, but he just wanted his garage back. I'm so thankful that this man cared enough about his stuff that he waited all night to prove that he was innocent, and thankfully... He stopped him when he did because I don't know how far my ex would have gone or what he was capable of. I fed the old man leftovers for the year that I lived in that apartment and I have since moved home with my parents. Don't judge a book by its cover because sometimes it's the people we least expect that become our guardian angels. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. EST, and there are super fun live streams every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night. You should come join. And if you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official, or over email, and you might even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast where you can hear all of these stories in big compilations and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, Oscar came from a long line of grouches.